Welcome to the OpenSpine Developer Network. In this first video, we're going to show you some basic OpenSpine concepts, the architecture behind it, and a little explanation on the protocol itself. Please do sit back and hopefully enjoy it. What is a SPIME? SPIME, a contraction of the words space and time, is a neologism coined by sci-fi writer Bruce Sterling for a currently theoretical object that is aware of its environment, can track its history of use, and interact with the world by communicating data. Nowadays, we already do have some rudimental spimes. For example, your mobile phone is one. Devices like Arduino and Sunspot with appropriate hardware and software configurations and also any kind of sensor that is nowadays available, such as industrial sensors, for instance. But what is this all about? This is about the Internet of Things, the world of interconnected objects. In the words of Internet of Things 2008, the International Conference for Industry and Academia, the term Internet of Things has come to describe a number of technologies and research disciplines that enable the Internet to reach out into the real world of physical objects. Enabling technologies such as wireless, Bluetooth, real-time localization and sensor networks are becoming increasingly common, bringing the Internet of Things into commercial use. They foreshadow an exciting future that closely interlinks the physical world and cyberspace a development that is not only relevant to researchers, but to corporations and individuals alike. The entire OpenSpime network architecture is based on XMPP. The Extensible Messaging and Presence Protocol is an open XML technology for real-time communication developed and maintained by the XMPP Standards Foundation. You may know it better under its original name, Jabber, XMPP comes with some great advantages. First of all, we can rely on existing servers and components which have proven themselves along the years, some of which are developed and released completely under open source. Secondly, by choosing an instant messaging protocol, managing things such as synchronous or asynchronous communication or presence control are already taken care of. Also, XMPP allows direct messaging from an entity to another entity, but it also allows two-way request-response mechanisms, which are very useful when talking about machine-to-machine -machine communication. Moreover, XMPP has a decentralized network architecture. On the contrary to many popular instant messaging services, where all communication goes through a centralized server, with XMPP entities can communicate via their own server. Think of it a little like email. Therefore, when one server goes down, the rest of the architecture still can communicate. Due to these advantages, the backbone of OpenSpime is entirely based on XMPP. The OpenSpime protocol itself is an XMPP extension. We currently do have some spimes, some physical objects we need to connect. But the question is, how do we connect them? OpenSpime is a distributed architecture that uses an open protocol available to everyone. You can get your copy on openspime.org. What can OpenSpime do for you? OpenSpime enables data reporting that is to say, collecting data from entities to a database. It enables instant messaging between entities, also known as SPIME talk. Finally, it allows to seek for data that has been produced by a particular SPIME across the overall Open SPIME network. Since this enables seeking for SPIMES, this functionality is also known as SPIMESeq. What are the entities of an open SPIME network? First, as you undoubtedly have already figured it out, we have SPIMES, 
which do connect to XMPP servers to communicate. Second, we have scope nodes. A scope node is an entity dedicated to collecting data with a particular scope, that is to say, a reason for collecting data. Data collected using a scope will be only available on the scope node database, and it is up to the scope node owner to define if and how the community can gather this data, or eventually develop and provide applications that use it. The scope may be global and public, such as CO2 Earth monitoring, or private, such as personal and company data monitoring. For this reason, global scopes, such as the one related to Earth monitoring, should only be provided by organizations which guarantee the respect of open standard policies and of privacy laws. Third, there are services. Services are there to respond to queries of various nature done from other entities. Last but not least, we have SPIME gates, which basically are custom versions of XMPP servers which may provide open SPIME related functionalities. With everything brought together, this is what the open SPIME architecture looks like. For a detailed view and for documentations, please do refer to openspime.org. On a final note, privacy, security and usability have been seriously considered in the definition of the open SPIME protocol. This is why the open SPIME protocol allows you to encrypt the data content sent between two entities to end encryption, digitally sign the data content sent between two entities, and finally claim the authority to perform operations in the name of another entity. Thank you for watching. You have now heard about OpenSpine, but you can try it already out yourself. The only thing you need to do is to log in to developer.openspime.com and in your My Developer page you will find all necessary resources to try it out. We're waiting for you.